Petitions. This is Mrs. Shopper. We're going to be talking about slope today. All right. So let's take a look. Um, so slope, first of all, is rate of change. It was what we were talking about yesterday. Um, and it's the ratio of the rise to the run. So how much, if you look on a graph, how much do you rise? How much do you run? It tells you how steep that line. Is it flat or what? Um, and so when we're looking at this, um, it also becomes steeper as the absolute value gets greater. So we're going to be exploring all of these ideas when we're talking about slope. So um, you might want to highlight, underline some of the information in your notes. Make sure you get this written down. So there are different types of slope. There is a positive slope. That means you're going upward left to right. There's a negative slope. That means you go downward left to right. There is a slope of zero, which means it's flat. You're not rising or dropping, it's flat. And then you have an undefined slope. And that's gonna be what we call a vertical line. So as we go through it, these are the types. What we're gonna practice doing is actually finding the slopes. Okay, but we want to make sure we can look at a line and be like, hey, that's positive, that's undefined, that's zero, that's negative. Those are good skills to have. So this is the slope formula. Okay, and you're used to using formulas to find values. You did it in seventh grade when you had to use the area formula or perimeter formula. Um, this is a formula to get, you, get us to what we want. Okay, it's how we move to the next spot. So anytime you see M moving forward, that's going to be slope. That's the variable we use for slope. So we're going to go ahead and find the slope of these two lines. So we're going to start here. We've got two ordered pairs. I'm just going to plot them so you can visually see what they look like. So we're at negative 3, 2, and we're at 5, 5, right there. Okay. So what we're trying to do is find the slope of this line. We want to know how far do you rise over how far do you run, okay? Now, with these, I have two points, and I'm going to label what each of these numbers mean. This is my x of the first point. This is my y of the first point. So negative 3 is x sub 1. 2 is y sub 1, okay? 5 is going to be x sub 1 and the other, I'm sorry, x sub 2 and y sub 2. So I've got x of the first point and y of the first point, and I have x of the second point and y of the second point. So I label those. I want you to do that in your practice, all right? So today's going to be all about the learning. Tomorrow you're going to be doing the practicing, which is also learning, but it's you get to put, your, put it to work, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write my formula, y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to fill in what I know. Instead of y sub 2, it's going to be 5. And instead of y sub 1, it's going to be 2. Instead of x sub 2, it's going to be 5. And instead of x sub 1, it's going to be negative 3. So I have 5 minus 2, which is 3. And I have 5 minus negative 3, which is 8. The slope of this line is 3 over 8. What that means is to get from this point, I rise 3 and I run 8. Okay, that's what that means. That's what that slope means. I rise 3 and I run 8 to get to each point. Okay. First time we've done slope, maybe was a little messy. What, you know, really weren't sure what we were doing. It's okay. We're going to go through some more examples. Let's try another one. Here we go. So here are my ordered pairs. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write down what each of those ordered pairs represent. Okay. Negative three is my X sub one. It's the X of the first point. Negative four is Y of the first point. Negative 2 is x of the second point. Negative 8 is y of the second point. 
Okay, so I have everything labeled out. Now I'm going to write my formula out. Y sub 2 minus Y sub 1 over X sub 2 minus X sub 1. I really do think it's important to write the formula every time you do it as we're getting started. Okay, I think that's really important that you do that because it's practicing that formula. We want you to know this formula. Y sub 2 minus Y sub 1 equals X sub 2 minus X sub 1. We want you to know those formulas. Now, now we can replace our numbers. Y sub 2 is, I'm going to use a different color, is negative 8. And then Y sub 1 is negative 4. X sub 2 is negative 2. And X sub 1 or I'm sorry, x sub 1 is negative 4. I did something wrong. Negative 3. That's my mistake. Okay. Oops. All right. So now what I'm going to do is simplify this out. I'm going to add up. Negative 8 plus 4 is negative 4. I'm going to add up. Negative 2 plus 3 is 1. So what this means, I'm going to sketch this out on the graph so again we can see what it means. If I have negative 3, negative 4, and my other ordered pair is negative 2, negative 8, what this means is to get from the first point to the second point, I'm going to go down 4 and over 1. And that's how I get to the next point. So that's going to be my slope, okay? It's gonna be negative four over one. If you wanna write it as just negative four, that's okay, all right? Now, as eighth graders, we want you to use the formula as your method of solving or finding the slope, okay? Now, if you're not able to do that, by the time the assessment comes, then graph them out and do your rise over run. That's fine. Um, but ultimately, as eighth graders, we really want you to be able to solve these with using the formula and not having to draw out a graph. Okay, let's try a couple more. All right, here we go. Um, so I'm going to put in my formula, y sub two minus y sub one over x sub two minus x sub one. And I'm gonna fill in my values. So I know that four is x sub one, 3 is y sub 1, negative 1 is x sub 1, I'm sorry, x sub 2, and y sub 2, okay? So I'm going to fill these in. y sub 2 is 6, y sub 1 is 3, x sub 2 is negative 1, and x sub 1 is 4. 6 minus 3 is 3, 1 minus 4 is negative 5, and that's my slope, okay? Now, we can also find, these are some more examples that we went through in class. Um, the video will get super long if I go through a ton of them, so I just kind of want to go back through a few of these, and then we're going to let you be good. So um, find the slope of the line. So for letter A, when I'm on here, because it's a graph line, I can use my rise over run. And on this one, I rise zero and I run three. The slope of A is zero. It's a horizontal line. It has zero slope. Anytime you have a horizontal line, it's zero slope. Letter B, we're going to go from here to here, okay? So I'm going to go down one, two, three, four, negative four, and I'm gonna go over positive one. So my slope is negative four over one, which is negative four. Letter C, it's a vertical line. So it's going to have an undefined slope. All vertical lines are undefined, no doubt. And then letter D, I'm gonna again find points. Now, when I'm finding points on here, 
I want to find where they intersect. Like, that's a good point. This, not so much a good point because it's in the middle. So I want to find corners. So here's a corner. Now what we're going to do is find our rise over run. We're going to rise two. We're going to run one, two, three. So my slope is rise two and run three. Okay, so your job then is to go ahead and work on your assignment. Um, good to see you all. Take care. Bye-bye.